Good morning. It's Monday the 3rd of October 2022 and I'm in Bradwell, another beautiful Peak District village and a bit misty at the moment so I'm going to do a walk today. I think we'll take a look at Bradwell later on because by then hopefully the mist will have cleared up. Beyond the lane known as the Green, I reached a squeeze style to take a footpath that entered a field as I made my way southwards. Yeah, the mist is slowly dispersing. It is beautiful though. I can see the hills now just beginning to appear behind the mist. But this is what I like about our country. You know, whether it's the weather conditions or just time of year, whatever. You can do the same walk throughout the year and it will always look different. After a gradual but gentle climb, I began to descend towards Hazel Badge Farm. I went through a gate to emerge onto the B6049 at the top of Bradwell Dale. Turning left, I followed the road for a few metres to the bend, where I carefully crossed over to take a narrow walled tarmac lane. So today's walk is between seven and eight miles. It's a route I've plotted myself. It's not one that I've got from a book. And I have done a variation of this walk before. It's been a long time actually since I've done a walk around Bradwell, so it's nice to come back here again. I mean, I pass through Bradwell a lot. You know, again, when I'm working in particular, I sort of come through Bradwell quite a lot, but uh, I haven't done a walk around this area for some time. So to say, it's nice to keep rediscovering places that are not far from where I live. The lane ended at Quarters Farm, beyond which I followed a path across a field in the direction of Great Hucklow. I just thought I'd stop a minute just to take in what's around me. Over there, just on the other side of the dale, that's the village of Little Hucklow. It's sort of on the horizon there, probably can't see it from here, but you've got a little hamlet of windmill. And on this side, just above me, we've got Durham Edge. And then just along from Durham Edge, it looks quite impressive, you've got Bleak Knoll. And then further down, you've got Bradwell Edge. And then the distance, you can just make out the iconic Wind Hill. I continued heading south across the fields, with the hills to my left. The path soon came out onto a track, which I followed to emerge onto a lane at the edge of the village of Great Hucklow. Great Hucklow has a thriving community, which includes this great pub, the Queen Anne. This is the old Butter Cross, which lies in front of the Nightingale Centre. The centre belongs to the Unitarians and accommodates groups for school and community visits to the area, conferences, and provides country holidays for children from inner cities. The Unitarian Old Chapel was founded in 1696 and is still very much in use. Greater Clow is today better known for the Derbyshire and Lancashire Gliding Club field on the Camp Hill Plateau above the village. You may recall that I've spoken previously 
about my real ale minibus trips. Well, the very first one I ever came on was back in 2006, because that was for my 40th birthday. And one of the places we came to was here in Great Hucklow. We stopped at the Queen Anne. I think, if I recall correctly, that was the third pub on the route. And yeah, that was the first beer trip that we did on the minibus. We decided that we were going to do more because it was very successful. <laughs> Flip an egg. I had to do a triple take when I saw this. <laughs> well, very interesting. <laughs> I've seen it all now. I walked along School Lane, passing the primary school to follow a track into Greater Clowood. After a while, the track emerged onto a lane below her clue edge. The last time I walked along here, it's a very long time ago actually, I forget where the time goes, but uh, it was actually with a walking group. It was the only other walking group apart from Lou and Lol that I've actually been walking with on a walk in Derbyshire. And it was with a friend of mine called Oliver and a couple of people that I think he worked with at the time. There was somebody called Jane and another guy called Rob. I can't remember the names of the other people that would have been there. Um, but it was very muddy. I remember it was a very muddy day. And we were walking along here. And I don't know why, but at the time, I can remember wearing some very creamy walking trousers and like a sort of creamy coloured top. But uh, of course, when I look back at that, <laughs> just asking for trouble really wasn't I you know thinking about how much mud there was around we're walking back towards Bradwell and uh, somebody was struggling to get over a stile so I thought oh I'll be a bit helpful here and I'll give him a leg up over the stile and as I sort of lifted his boot up he sort of whacked me in the face <laughs> so there was mud all over my face and all down my nice creamy coloured top <laughs> I was absolutely covered in mud and I thought well yeah that'll teach me to wear creamy coloured walking stuff when I go for a walk in the mud <laughs> and that'll also teach me to be helpful so I don't think I actually ever helped anybody again after that. <laughs> I was now heading east as I continued following the lane along the ridge. Before long, I found myself in the little hamlet of Breton with its well known pub, the Barrel Inn. Uh, the Barrel Inn is another of Derbyshire's great pubs. It's actually the highest pub in Derbyshire. Not the highest in the Peak District, just in Derbyshire. The highest in the Peak District, of course, is the Cat and Fiddle Inn. But that's actually in Cheshire. But uh, yeah, the Barrel Inn's a nice place. Been here a few times before now. And again, like I was saying earlier about Grace Hucklow, we came here on one of my minibus trips. We started, actually, on that particular trip, we started here at Barrel of Breton. We went down to Fulo, on to Eam, uh, and then on to Stony Middleton, and ended up at Pillsley on the Chatsworth Estate. So, started furthest away, ended up closer to home. So, but like all our minibus trips, real ale minibus trips, it was brilliant. And of course, you've got a fantastic view here. Look at this. I think the Barrel Inn must be another of the Peak District's best views from a pub. Look at that. It's just gone half past 12. Yeah, it's nearly lunchtime. I am feeling quite hungry, so I'm going to stop and eat my lunch very soon. It would be very tempting to go into the Barrel Inn for a, a, you know, a bit of food and a pint, but as I say, I have brought my own food with me, so 
I'll move on a bit further and I'll find somewhere else to sit and have my lunch there. I took the narrow lane between the Barrel Inn and Breton Cottage to now head in a northeasterly direction. Before the lane curved to the right, I turned off left at a footpath sign to take a narrow path between a house and a ruin. Over a stile, I entered another field as I began to head northwestwards, descending gradually in the direction of Breton Clough. Yes, I know. Why did I just walk through that squeeze stile when I could have quite easily have avoided it the other side? Well, I felt like it, okay. <laughs> I just thought it would be a lot more fun, and it was. And that's part of what makes my day. Beyond the wall, I stopped for lunch for a few minutes before carrying on to drop more steeply into Breton Clough. Crossing the footbridge to then shortly cross a second, I climbed up again the other side out of the cliff to enter more fields. path levelled out as I crossed the fields. I was now approaching Cocky Farm. Passing to the right of it, I continued in the same direction as I followed a path between a wire fence to my left and a wall to my right. Joining a track briefly, the path dropped into a small valley, climbing out again to emerge onto a lane in the quiet hamlet of Abney. Abney belonged to William Peveril and is a secluded cluster of cottages nestling in a hollow, sheltered and protected from the surrounding high moors by a shield of trees. The settlement probably gets its name from Abba's A, E Y, which means island and it certainly appears as an oasis in the vast expanse of moorland which surrounds it. Turning left along Duper Lane, I carried on in a north-westerly direction towards the bleak landscape of Abney Moor. It was very pleasant going to Abney again. I don't think I've been to Abney for a long time. It's, uh, it's not exactly on a, a major road, but I gather it still gets uh, quite a bit of traffic going through it on the on the lane there. But, uh, anyway, yeah, it was nice to see it again. I'm sort of probably about three quarters of the way through the route now, so I don't think there should be any more climbing to do now. If anything, it'll be dropping down back into Bradwell. <laughs> Whilst I'm walking on this very pleasant old road, I'm going to give today's shout out. And I'm going to say hi to Des and Maria from Greater Manchester. 
Now Dares, he's a YouTuber, and his channel is simply his name, Dares Green. And uh, he's had his YouTube channel for only a couple of years, I think. Not that long, but I'm surprised I've not come across his channel sooner. I've only come across it fairly recently. But anyway, since I found Dez's channel, <laughs> I subscribed after watching a couple of his videos because he's very interesting to watch. He does a lot of walks where it's just him and he does others where he's got his wife Maria in as well, which is nice. I just find Dez really interesting to watch. Um, what I like about Dez is that he's got a very soft, gentle voice. And whilst you're watching him, he, he does shots like I'm doing now, where he's just filming himself, walking and talking. And when he does that, I just find that because of his soft, gentle voice, just really draws you in. So he's a real pleasure to watch. So please do subscribe to his channel, you know, check his channel out and subscribe. I mean, I think he even said in one of his videos, he said, uh, oh, perhaps you consider subscribing. He said, can't do any harm, can it? He said, <laughs> ah. Rick words, I think. Very good words. So yeah, it can't do any harm. Go and have a look at Des's channel, Des Green. As always, I'll put the link in the description below the video. At a T-junction, I went left to follow a broad track, which very gradually curved around in a clockwise direction. The views across the Hope Valley were very clear now, and I could see Wynn Hill in the distance. Passing through a gate, I left the main track as I turned off left over a stone stile and through a small gate. Keeping to the edge of a field, I came to another gate, through which I came to Bradwell Edge. Whilst I'm standing here on Bradwell Edge, I'm not far from the end of the wall now. I just thought I'd stand here before I drop down because that view is amazing. Just look at that. That is a pretty awesome view of Bradwell. You can clearly see Hope Cement Works beyond it. <laughs> so, yeah, what's a view of a Bradwell? Okay, well, we'll just drop down into it now then. So I have seen a total of three walkers on this entire wall today. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, I saw a couple between Great Hucklow and the Barrel Inn at Breton. And I just saw a chap walking on his own as I was walking on that broad track just this side of Abney. But, uh, I've seen a few cyclists, and a couple of horse riders, very few people today. So I think probably most of the people that I'll see today are gonna to be in Bradwell when I get down there now. <laughs> The path eventually emerged onto a lane as I found myself back in Bradwell. Making my way towards the village centre, I passed the church of St Barnabas, erected in 1868. Bradwell's main street follows the Bradwell Brook crossing it at one point in a narrow pinch, controlled by traffic lights. Here there is a small parade of local shops, including a co-op, 
post office and village shop, and a fish and chip shop. There is also a small petrol station, garage and fire station. The majority of Bradwell's quaint little cottages dates from the 18th and 19th centuries. Initially, there were separate areas of the village, containing a mishmash of charming and individual properties, accessed by a maze of narrow lanes and alleyways. However, these once separate and outlying settlements have now become united with the infill of modern development to create a delightful Derbyshire village of considerable size. Well, here we are then, back in Bradwell. So that's the end of my walk. And yet another lovely walk. I've always thought Bradwell was a beautiful place. I could actually, you know, could have seen myself living here. It's still in the Derbyshire Dales district, so I could have bid for a property here, but to be perfectly honest with you, as lovely as Bradwell is, it's just a bit too far from Matlock and it wouldn't be convenient for, obviously, my friends and work and stuff, so, but, if I didn't have those ties, I would have seriously considered of bidding for a property in Bradwell. Certainly worse places to live. It's got a co-op, a chip shop, a village store, at least four pubs. I've never been in any of the pubs in Bradwell, actually. It's about time that I actually changed that. 